So in short, the Aperture M9 I would recommend for filmmakers, the Sakani I recommend for YouTubers and photographers, the Iwata is a really good option if you want bicolor and a little bit more power. In the moment, well, we'll just wait and see. Before we begin, I just want to mention that all these different LED lights were sent to me, but the latest being this Moment LED video light. So I'm going to be reviewing that, but also comparing that to the rest of these to find out which pocket LED light is best for you. These pocket LED lights are pretty great because they have a built-in battery, meaning you can just slip them in your camera bag and pull them out whenever you need just a little bit of light as a hair light, backlight, background light whatever the case may be. These are really portable and they're great accessory for your camera bag. And that being said, these LED lights are not that expensive either. These few LED lights are around the $50 mark. The Iwata is just a little bit more expensive. If you're curious about the pricing or the availability, there will be a product link in the description down below so you guys can check out these LED lights. I am an affiliate, so that helps a lot. To start this video, let's do a brief overview of each individual light. Let's first start off with the Aperture M9. The M9 is the infamous pocket LED light that everyone goes to, and rightly so. We have three different buttons for this LED light. We have an on and off switch, which I like that when you turn it on, it slowly becomes brighter to the brightest setting. That way if someone happens to be looking at it, they're not gonna be squinting or not gonna be as, as surprised, I guess. And we have a minus and plus button to increase or decrease the brightness level. And when you go from the dimmest to the brightest setting, it actually moves fairly quickly, quicker than the rest of these lights. So for those situations where you do need just to increase the brightness really quickly, anytime you can save messing around with the light is always helpful. And this one is the quickest and easiest to use. Combined with the lightweightness of this light and the magnets, you can actually attach this to any magnetic surface. So this allows more versatility and mounting options. On the front, we have this magnetic plastic shield, which allows you to diffuse that light ever so slightly. But it's also used for with the included gels. You have a CTB, which is color temperature blue, a CTO, which is tungsten, and a piece of diffusion paper. So you just put this in between the plastic shield and the light and clip it on, and this allows a little bit more versatility. And those gels do come in handy because this light is not by color. So if you do want to get a little bit more flexibility in color temperatures, you have to use the colored gels. And that's pretty much it for the body itself. It's very minimal. You do have an occluded hot shoe attachment, which I'm not a big fan of this mounting option. I much prefer a built-in quarter 20 like these other LED lights have. I just know that when I pick up the light, I can mount it to a tripod, light stand, whatever the case may be. The Aperture M9 comes with a nice pouch, which you can put your light, of course, your different gels, your quarter 20 cold shoe mount, um, and your charger. So everything is nicely contained in this little pouch. Of course, with Aperture and the rest of their lighting products, you know you're gonna get a good color rendering index. So if color is a main issue for you, Aperture is a reliable brand, and I feel like they're going to deliver on color. It's very lightweight and very simple, and has very quick adjustments, which do come in handy. You don't wanna have any frustrations with your equipment. So this by far is the easiest to use, and I feel it's the most reliable. And it's also the cheapest. It comes at about $45, which is just shy of the other few lights here, but you get a quality and a reliable light without too much bells and whistles. Moving on to the Sakani X21. This light is much like the Aperture M9. In terms of brightness, they're pretty much identical. They're about the same size, but it does have a metal housing, so it is a bit heavier. The one thing I like about the Sakani is it has a LED window, so you can actually tell how much battery life is left on your unit. With the Aperture M9, you really have no way of telling how much battery life is left. But this does kind of cause an issue. You might drain a little bit more battery life, of course, but also the way you toggle these switches is a little bit more complex. It has a power on and off button, which you have to hold to turn on, and then you have to press it again to actually turn on the light. So it's an extra step, and that's why the M9 might be better for you if you need to work extremely quickly. Then you can adjust the different levels with the plus and minus button, which this goes all the way from 100% all the way down to 1%. So you have a lot of control with the different brightness settings. Because of the metal housing, it is going to be heavier. So if weight is an important issue for you, then I recommend going back to the M9. It's by far the lightest light in this situation. 
The Sakani also features magnets on the corners as well, and it does come with two different shields. It has a clear filter, and then you also have a tungsten filter. This makes it by far a lot quicker just to change the color temperature with that magnetic shield. Now, if you're concerned about the different brightness or even color shifts between these two lights, I wouldn't be too concerned about it. There is a difference between them, but it is very subtle. And I think the way you're going to use any of these lights, you may not be super concerned about color temperature. I rarely think you're going to use your, this as your key light, which that would be the most crucial for skin tones. In terms of accessories that comes with the Sakani X21, we have a very similar looking pouch which holds the LED light, the two plastic shields, a cold shoe ball head adapter, which is pretty nice, a micro USB cable, and we have a bunch of these different colored gels, which I think this could be really useful for a YouTube or studio setup. Using this light as a bit of a backlight, maybe a hair light where you just want to play around with different colors. This is a really cheap option. I recommend that if you are a YouTube studio filmmaker vlogger to actually go for the Sakani X21. I think you get a few more accessories that allows you to be more creative with this light. Moving on to the Iwata GL01. We are taking it up a notch in terms of pricing. It's just a little bit more expensive than the rest of these lights but we get an advantage with by color. So now you can choose your color temperature. The rest of these lights, the Aperture M9 and the Sakani, are set at daylight 5600 Kelvin. With the Iwata, we can change our color temperature. So this gives us a color temperature range of 3000 to 5500 Kelvin. Having a bi color light leads to another step of versatility. So if you have your key light as 5600 Kelvin and you just want a warm backlight like I do with a lot of my videos, you can change that color temperature to a warmer setting and you now have this nice color contrast. And as you can clearly see that this light has many more LED lights so it is going to be brighter. It's going to be twice as bright, but you all know that twice as bright is only one stop difference. So keep that in mind. This light has a very similar housing and features to the Sakani X21, but we also have an additional mode button to toggle between color temperature and brightness. In terms of brightness, we can go all the way down to 5%. We can't go down to 1% like the Sakani, if that makes a difference to you. Because you have to fit so many more LED lights, you need to power this a bit more. So they included a larger battery. So it, you're going to have a much better battery life compared to the rest of these if you are using at maximum brightness. But be careful though, if you do use it at 100% for a good period of time, it can get very hot. So just keep your eye on that. And for accessories for this light, we don't have much. We just have the LED light, the included micro USB cable, but we do have this really handy diffusion filter. This kind of just slips onto the light itself. And because it's a little bit further from the LEDs, you're going to get a softer look. Moving on to the Moment LED light. This is a pretty interesting light for a number of different reasons. It is a bicolor LED light, just like the Iwata. It is actually just as bright as the Iwata as well, even though it is a much smaller design. And it features about the same level of battery life. This has a very similar interface to the Iwata as well. They pretty much look identical. My biggest gripe with this though is the operation. When you go from 5% all the way to 100%, it just takes way too long to make that adjustment. 5% and if I go to all the way up, 40. Eighty and a hundred. That takes way too much time. I highly recommend that Momin looks into maybe a firmware update for this light if that's possible, or just maybe in a future model if they can have a faster setting. For accessories, we just have a few. We have a ball head cold shoe adapter. We have this little pouch and a micro USB-C cable. I'm not sure that makes a huge difference, but out of all these lights, this is the only one that charges via USB-C. Upon opening up this light, I notice one small issue. I couldn't turn it on. I could do nothing. It just felt like a solid brick. The little dial on the side, I couldn't move it at all. And then I looked closely and it was filled with hot glue. So I got really concerned if Momin was selling faulty units 
or maybe there's a mix up in the order or something, whatever happened that shouldn't have happened. Now, when I reached out to them, they kindly supplied me with a new unit and they shipped it out to me free of charge, thankfully. Um, but I do want to mention this because if they have some quality control issues, you may end up getting a bad unit and that's just extra time to get another product back. I feel like with a more reputable brand like Aperture, that wouldn't happen at all. So do keep that in mind when you're ordering products off Amazon. Just be wary, read the reviews, check your reviews like you're doing now. So to summarize, the Aperture M9 is the smallest, it is the lightest, and it is the cheapest, if only by a few dollars. As fast and easy operation time, so if you're working in a fast environment, this is best suited for you. And I think Aperture pretty much nailed it. The Sakani X21 is very similar to the Aperture M9, despite it's a little bit slower and a little bit more clumsy to operate. But it comes with all those different accessories and those gels that I think it's best suited for YouTube studio photography work. The Iwata light is brighter than the Aperture M9 and the Sakani, plus it is by color, making it a really good option if you want a little bit more premium of a product. However, it does cost a bit more. What about the Moment light? The Moment actually does pretty much everything that the Iwata does, and it's not much more expensive than the Aperture and the Sakani. So if you're looking for a best all around LED light, I'd recommend the Moment. Yes, it has some issues, slow startup time, it's kind of annoying, but this by far does everything really well. So there are my thoughts on these four LED lights compared. It's actually quite interesting because I didn't think the moment would actually beat the Iwana, but it did. Let me know your thoughts on this video and which one you're going to go for. If you want to see a full review for the Iwata, the Aperture, or the Sakani, I have videos of them on my channel so you can check them out there. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you next time.